Today, I saw Thor Love and Thunder. Let's talk about it. Uh. Uh. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Max's Movie Mondays, where I review movies on Monday. There's a few other things I would like to get out of the way. Movies are one of my favorite things of all time, aside from, you know, Minecraft, video games, and a lot of other things like that. Marvel movies in particular are also some of my favorite things in the world. And why not kick off this series with reviewing a Marvel movie like Thor 4, which is Thor Love and Thunder. The first part of this review will be no spoilers, but the second part of this review will be spoilers. So skip to this timestamp here if you would like to see the spoiler review. If not, don't watch past that point if you haven't seen the movie. All right, now to the review. I went into this movie expecting something amazing and I got it. I really, really loved it. A question on some of your minds might be, was it better than Thor Ragnarok? And with that, I'm gonna say, I don't think so, no. I feel like Thor Ragnarok had a lot less direction, if that makes sense. Like the story, it was kind of random. It was sort of just, oh, we're doing this. Oh, this happened, so we're gonna do that. It's a little hard to explain if you haven't seen the movie, but it's sort of uh, spontaneous. But Thor Love and Thunder, there was definitely a lot of direction to it, which, you know, would work normally for a movie. But I think with Taika Waititi's directing, I think Ragnarok kind of worked with that style. If you don't really know much about the cast, I won't really spoil anything, but the villain was really, really good. I was actually pleasantly surprised with him. I thought he might have been actually a little bit better than Hela, which was the villain in Ragnarok. I should probably stop comparing it to Ragnarok, because it's kind of difficult to considering that was the most recent Thor movie. The movie starts off kind of with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they don't stay for that long, but I really, really love the beginning of it because it is that kind of chaotic kind of um, vibe that most of Ragnarok has. And it is so much fun because we get to see Thor back to normal, if you see what I mean. The movie is spent mostly traveling. And honestly, if I had to make like kind of one thing that I would mainly improve about this movie, I wish it could have just had a little bit more action. It did not have quite a lot of action, but the action was a little bit repetitive in my opinion. Like it kind of felt like they were fighting the same battles. But other than that, it was really, really good. The comedy, on point. Taika knows what he is doing. There is uh, one comedic element. There's actually two in this movie. One has to do with uh, animals. I'm not going to say what kind of animals, but they're animals. And one has to do with Thor's uh, hammers. But the, it's super funny. I watched the movie with my parents and they're both cracking up whenever both those things happen. Another thing I want to mention is I'm really proud that they've carried out Thor's story for so far and it doesn't feel dragged out because that was one of my worries going into this movie because not Iron Man, not Captain America, not Spider-Man, all three of those characters I've listed have had a trilogy up until this point but Thor is the first character to get a fourth solo movie and I think they actually did a good job and the story kind of went full circle because there was kind of someone narrating the story throughout it and it worked really really well. I'm not really sure what else I can say without getting into spoilers so if you have not seen the movie I would really really recommend clicking off this video because we are going to start spoilers in three, two, one. The spoiler section is going to be a little bit all over the place because it's just going to be me saying what I liked about the movie and what I didn't, the specifics of it, but I hope you enjoy it. Now, where do I begin? It was so cool seeing Zeus. Like, uh, Christian, no. Russell Crowe's Zeus was so amazing. I loved his accent and whenever he like tiptoed down the steps with his little, uh, I don't know, toga, like a kilt kind of thing. Skirt. It was more like a skirt, excuse me. And I thought he was going to die. Oh my god, whenever he got hit with a lightning bolt. And then I was, ugh. I was so scared Korg was going to die as well. But then his face survived and I was happy. It felt a little cheap though because it kind of felt like what happened to Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 whenever we got faked out by thinking he was dead. But he really was not dead, obviously. And he's still in the movies. I kind of enjoyed the advice Star-Lord gave Thor at the beginning of the movie. It kind of definitely set a tone for the movie. Especially Korg narrating the whole movie it, it really went full circle because at the beginning he was telling it to the story of kids and those kids actually got kidnapped by gore the god butcher the villain of the movie christian bale and at the end of the movie they were kind of the ones that you know fought because they got thor's powers another thing i was happy about was that darcy was not in the movie for very long because i find her annoying it was so cool 
seeing eternity at the end, my dad's jaw was dropping because it's just so cool to see that it's like a cosmic creature along with like the living tribunal and the watchers and you saw the statues in the background as well. It's like freaking Marvel nerd candy. I was going crazy, honestly. And what I was talking about earlier was the screaming goats cracked up my family every single time, especially whenever they ran into that planet and you just see the goats screaming because they thought the planet was so much bigger than it actually was, but they just hit it. <laughs> it was, that was really, really funny. I enjoyed that. And also the bit that they had with Stormbreaker and Mjolnir and how anytime Thor would be interested in another weapon, Stormbreaker would kind of just appear in the room slowly. Like, especially whenever Thor saw Mjolnir for one of the first times in a while, and he was trying to get Mjolnir, but then... <laughs> that was really, really funny. The humor doesn't miss a beat, and whenever it doesn't, that's because it's a very serious scene with, like, gore or something, and those scenes were actually fairly intimidating. Gore did remind me of a character I've seen before, though. It's Pitch Black in the Rise of the Guardians movie. It's actually a really sweet kind of, like, holiday movie, but Pitch Black sort of operates the same way that Gore the God Butcher does. Like, they both have these kind of, like, shadow sort of demons that follow them. They both have really weird teeth. Uh, they both have non-American accents. That's not really a big deal. But the biggest thing of all is kind of wherever they go, shadows sort of follow them. And yeah, I'm not sure if that was really copied or inspired, but it's definitely a coincidence. Also, I was really, really happy that Thor was not fat for this whole movie. No shame against, you know, being fat. It's just, it is much more entertaining to see, you know, not so many fat jokes being thrown at Thor like there were at Endgame. But, you know, him being back to his, you know, ripped godlike self. And that was uh, especially shown well, people appreciating his body whenever he was stripped naked by Zeus and they were all like staring at him and the women, oh, and that they fainted. That was super funny. I, I, I really, really enjoyed that. I didn't really enjoy seeing him naked. Hey, oh, 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 pause. I'm not really sure what else to say. I don't really know how they could have improved this movie too much compared to Ragnarok. As I said, maybe a little bit more action, but I'm really not sure. I think... I'm not really sure about his interactions with uh, Natalie Portman's character, Jane Foster. I think that frustrated me at times because like she, she left him and he was being weird to her, but she left him in the end. And I was kind of just like, I'm not really passionate about their relationship. And it did make the movie better, but I don't know. I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. We've got a very special guest now. This is my cat, Manny. Manny, what did you think of Thor Love and Thunder? That's really insightful, actually. So you're saying that Thor is a socialist because you wanted Mjolnir back? Okay. Are there any, you know, strong negatives about the movie? Anything that could have been improved at all? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And now another special guest to talk about what they thought about Thor Love and Thunder, my mom. Okay, so tell me, what was your favorite part about the Thor movie? Probably it was the kids getting Thor deputized. I respect that. Who was who would you say was your favorite character? Or maybe maybe more specifically, who do you think was the comic relief of the movie? Okay, so favorite character. Actually, I didn't think I would pick her, but Natalie Portman was my favorite character of the movie. If you were the director of Thor Love and Thunder, what's one thing you would change? A little bit more fight scenes. That's 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 actually what I just said. So <laughs> well I think we pretty much have the same opinion on it. I also got Manny's opinion. You said some pretty interesting things. Another thing I would change about all of these solo movies is as much fun as to watch the hero battle and do it all on his own. I never understand why they get down to almost humanity ending and everything without calling a friend. Phone a friend. They didn't play, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Yes. Everyone, give it up for mother. Before I end the video, one thing that made me enjoy the Thor movie even more was the fact that I watched zero trailers. I think this is the first time that I've not watched a trailer for a Marvel movie in like seven or eight years. I'm not even exaggerating. And I didn't really have m many like ideas what was going to happen in the movie other than the fact that there was Gore the God Butcher and he wanted to kill God, which I mean, that is a lot of the movie and I knew it was going to be but I didn't really know about specific scenes, which I really enjoyed going to the movie. And I actually just sat down about 20 minutes ago and watched the trailer. And I I think I'm still gonna continue with it. I don't think I'm gonna watch trailers anymore. I still would have enjoyed the movie if I had seen several Thor trailers, 
but I think the thing is, whenever you don't watch a trailer and you already are going to watch the movie, there's no point in watching the trailer because the trailer is supposed to get you excited about the movie. If you're going to see the movie, there's no point in it. You see my logic? And it might give some things away from the movie. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you listening to me rant along with my cat Manny and my mom for however many minutes this video was. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. My name's been Red Panda Studios. This is me, signing off.